All right, so in this chapter, we're going to see the mesh the body and we're going to select the body and I'm going to make a duplicate and I'm going to rename it. So let's click on rename and let's say the um, subdivision, so sub D. So I'm going to hit enter and let's rename this the um, Let's say backup just for backup all right so here I have the backup and we have the subdivision actually I'm going to rename it something called project and I'll show you that so we're going to project all the details on the subdivision but first if you hold on shift and click over here everything is going to be hidden except the which the layer has been selected so I'm going to click on the subdivision and we're going to hit the B and I'll go to the zero mesh guide. I'm going to draw our guides over here. So, so what actually we are looking for something called edge flow. So let me show you what I mean. So basically this is how the edges flow in a mesh. Now these are very nice and clean edge flows. Uh, unfortunately, zero measure won't allow us to give this kind of a flow. I mean, it's try, but it's not going to give the exact because generally zero mesh is allow you to give the sculpting topology. So this is actually a topology which can be used for the rigging and animation, but the zero measure is not designed for that. So it just gives you the sculpting topology that you can work on it. However, we're going to later on create this kind of a topology when we will working on the retopology. But right now we need at least close enough, especially if you look at the this eye loops over here. So we have the loops going on and this is useful for the sculpting when you are creating some kind of a um, crease and the wrinkles over here. So it's really useful. So that's why we will be using zero mesh in order to get a nice clean topology over here. So let's come over here and let's go to the zero mesh and let's go to the zero mesh guide. And how you can do this is actually by just drawing like these. These are the curves over here. And if you hold down alt and you can just remove them like that. And if you bring your brush size a little bit smaller, so it's going going to give you a very you can see these are the checkers kind of a there's an orange and then black orange and black these are the checkers so it's actually uh, changing the size of the checkers so let me just make it more smaller and show it to you again and look at this how it's changing the size so actually it's going to be much dense over here so uh, depending on your brush size how much uh, polygons you want so if you have the br uh, bigger brush size so you can make a, a less polygons over here and if you have very small size of the brush you can have very dense mesh over here so depending on you so we'll start with the head uh, we're going to start uh, giving some loops over here on the head and make sure your symmetry should on so we are uh, doing on the both sides so I will start from the center and just go like that I'll go all the way over here so this is my complete loop now if you see there's a little bit gap you can bring your brush over here to the end and just drag it out till it meets up and now let's do this one let's do the i let me hit the f sometimes just go offset that's completely fine go to brush side a little bit bigger there we go and for the neck so I'm just guiding at how the edge going to flow on the mesh and again it's not the precise but it tries to keep that way like this I want the edge flow like this over here and you don't need to go very very precisely it's just drawing the guides how the edge will be flowing on the mesh Maybe like that now we can try over here so if I just drag and hold on shift you will see there's going to be a line 
and this is going to create a loop of the edge over here so we can do the same over here so if I drag and hold down shift and we can create so sometimes it's act weird because let's try to snapping onto the mesh so we need a good angle let's try from over here and just drag and hold on shift and there we go now we have a clean loop over here let's do the same over here just drag and hold on shift and we'll try to make it this loop I guess this is not working so I'll just draw it out quickly Here we go. The rib cage. And maybe from the pelvis. I won't go to the end because uh, I found that uh, sometimes it's act weird. So generally, I don't go to the where's the thin mesh. I generally allow the zero mesh will automatically resolve that issue. And let's do over here one more. Make the brush size a little bit smaller so there's a gap. And actually, I will try to connect with this point and try to all the way over here. There we go. And let's bring out this one and take it out all the way up. Let's bring it all the way up. There we go. Let's do the deltoid as well and let's clean up the neck and try to make sure that you are not drawing on the opposite side so I'm going to draw on the right side because I'm all the way going on the right so keep it that way okay let's bring it to the end there we go wait for the knee joints one as well and drawing over here one more okay I think I'm happy with this maybe for the fingers and let's hold on shift and drag it out try to make a loop over here and let's try over here one more time so I will just go over here hold on shift and there we go let's do over here one more and hold on shift there we go hold on shift and since it's pretty low let me just remove this and see one more time I'm going to hold on alt and remove and hold on shift and there we go hit the F let's come out and yeah there we go so I'm just going to save it just for our backup so if you're saving the file it's always a good habit to go to the file and turn on the undo history so the file size is not going to increase that much so I'm going to hit the save as and let me come over here let's go to the 14 and save it and there we go so what I'm going to do is go to the geometry and turn off the data mesh and come to the zero mesh and these are the options we're going to use so first thing first you have two buttons over here so you have the legacy and the zero mesh so this zero mesh is the new algorithm uh, if you turn on the legacy and click on the zero mesh it's going to be the older version algorithms which can be used uh, however, you have the four algorithms. If you hold on Alt and click, there's going to be another algorithm. And if you turn it off, and again, if you hold on Alt and click over here, so you will be using another algorithm. So depending on how you like it, so it's going to calculate uh, differently than before. So it's up to you. Um, uh, below that there are some quick settings over here that we can go through it so first these are the target poly count so how much your poly count you are looking for so you can give it the value over here so I'll go something like maybe in between 4.5 don't go so high or maybe 3.5 I guess uh, we can keep changing this value um, until we find the good result over here 
uh, you have some presets, you have the half, sum, double. Uh, I'll just keep it, turn it off and give the value of maybe 3.5. Five, hit enter. There we go. Um, again, uh, and below that you have the adaptive and the curve strength. So adaptive is going to try to keep refining its shape. Um, and it's not going to try to not lose the detail. I generally go with the 80 person, so it's good enough. Then you have the curve strength. How much it's going to consider about the curves? So you give give the value. You can go all the way to zero. It's not going to consider the curves anymore. And you can come to the 50, so it's going to be 50-50 that uh, zero mesh is going to recalculate the uh, geometry on 50%, but also it's going to consider your curve strength as well, so depending on that value. So I'll generally give it around 80%, and yeah. Uh, rest if you have any hard edges, if you are working on the hard modeling, so you can turn it off the keep crease and detect edges. I generally uh, personally keep it off. Uh, we don't need it right now. So we're going to keep it that way. And uh, let's click on the zero mesh and see what comes out. So it's going to start calculating over here. And let's see what it comes out. And there we go. And looks fine. I'm going to hit Shift F to see the wireframe over here. And actually, it did a pretty good job. Um, all the polygons are looking nice and crisp. Uh, however, we're not f uh, looking for something uh, animation over here. I'm just looking for the sculpting purpose. And everything stays qu quiet over here. And on the first shot, it pretty good job. Uh, I'm going to hit Control C. I think I can make a little bit change over here to make a curve over here. So rather than making everything quads, so we can make a little bit change over here. So I'm just going to hold on Alt and just delete them quickly and just delete this one and try to make a curve, more rounded curve over here. So just like that. And then we can just draw the curve like that. And I'm going to continue this curve all the way as much as I can. And this one as well. And for this one, I can go till this one and maybe this one as well. Let's connect this one as well. Uh, I think I'll just keep it off so it doesn't connect that way, more like a boxy shape out of it. And for this one, I think I can go here. Yeah. Hit the Shift F and let's do it again. Zero mesh and see what we get. So 3.5 looks fine to me. I think this will be going to work pretty fine over here. And just let it be quickly. Zero mesh, and there we go. And let's hit Shift F and see what we get. Uh, it's did a pretty good job over here. I like that. And take give me some little bit extra kind of a different edge flow. I wasn't expecting for it, but that's completely fine. It's not too much worry about it. Um, since we are just doing for the subdivision. And that's the only why we are doing over here. And looks fine to me. So I think I'm happy with this one. So I'll go with this one. So let's hit Shift F. Um, now what we can do is, uh, since we need to grab a little bit detail from the backup, so we can do that. So we can turn on the project. And these are overlapping uh, mesh over here. So we have the project over here, we have the subdivision. And let me decrease the visible count and just scroll it out. So we have the project and subdivision. In fact, let me do it this way. There we go, and there we go. Yeah. There we go, yeah. So we have the project and subdivision. So we can focus on these two right now. Uh, I'm going to turn on the project. And what we can do is, uh, right now I'm selecting the subdivision and we're going to project all the detail on the subdivision. Now, I'm in the first level right now because uh, if you want to subdivide the mesh, you can go to the geometry and click on the divide and it's going to subdivide, which so is going to increase your poly count. So we are actually multiplying the poly counts over here. Uh, right now the active is the 86 
And if I hit the Shift D, so I'm going to the lower level, which is the 21,000 poly count over here. So that means if I come over here, I have the two subdivision over here. We have the first level and the uh, upper level. So we are actually multiplying poly counts over here. So that's how we can subdivide and add more geometry. We can even go to the millions polygons uh, depending on the RAM that you have and depending on your processor. So I can hit Control D again and going up, but I'll do uh, go to the lower subdivision and delete higher right now, and we'll come over here. And I'm right now selecting the subdivision so I can um, turn off the solo and click on the project all. And what it's going to do is it will try to take the uh, project, uh, take the detail from the project and uh, try to post it away. So I'll show you what I mean. If I hit the Control D, so I just div subdivided the model over here, and now we again go come to the 86,000 poly count over here. But I'm going to turn off the solo and click on the project all, and I'm going to hit solo again. And you can see it's trying to take out the the higher mesh, which was the dynamic mesh over here, and trying to capture the detail and projecting on the subdivision over here. And that's what it's trying to do it. So we can do it till the uh, highest subdivision. I can hit Control D and turn off the solo and just click on Project All. And let's hit Control D again. So now we are in the one million. And again, Project All. And it's going to take a little bit of time because it's calculating till 1 million and yeah looks fine to me I'm going to turn on the project and you can see uh, there's no much difference now it looks like uh, this is the dynamic which is not actually but uh, if I hit shift F you can see you have a clean nice geometry over here which is good to go and yeah there we go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start removing all these uh, details over here however we have the shape but I want to remove the uh, all the details, so I'm going to hold on shift and start smoothing out all this detail and doing till all the way till the tail. Just keep doing that. So just smooth it out. There we go. Going to cover all the parts. There we go. Maybe inside as well. So the, I'm trying to smooth it out just because, uh, like I said, the clay buildups gives the nice flesh over here, and when you smooth it out, it gives you the skin tone or the skin texture, color. So, however, we're going to add the skin as well, uh, which we're going to cover it a little bit later. But try to smooth it out as much as you can. And there we go. Well, it looks fine to me. I'm going to hit F and just zoom out a little bit. Maybe even make it br bigger brush size. It's better. No, I'm not worried about the changing the shape of it because it's much higher polygon and it's not going to change that much the shape of the velociraptor all right cool so let me close this okay and let me increase the visible count over here and come over here and let's hold on shift and click over here so everything is going to be turned on i'm going to turn off the project we don't need it anymore and now it's good for the skin toning over here however we do need to add the details on the claws and the tongues and all this details over here but uh, we're going to do that a little bit later but first we're going to cover up all the skins and try to uh, make it pop out the detail as much as we can right so see you in the next chapter